Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and bring them out to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some interesting stuff. First up, Bank of England bashes crypto while considering cryptos. And I find this very telling as to what the banks are doing. And I think they're running scared because even the Bank of England is doing this and the banks in America are actually starting to allow us to custody cryptocurrencies ourselves. On top of that, we're gonna take a look at some metrics which show us just how early we are and that we are truly in the right place at the right time with this bull market for crypto and digital assets. And finally, Tom Brady's into crypto, fantastic. All right, so we'll take a look at what's going on there, but first let's take a look at what's going on in the market. Uh, so today it is May 10th, it is a high noon, and we got a pretty good market cap, 2.44. Really haven't gone up too much, not uh, too low. Uh, we reached a high of uh, $2.5 trillion, but we're back down a little bit. And you know what, I'm happy with this. Any, anything above, geez, you know what? I remember just about a year ago, it was 200 billion. And now here we are, 2.4 trillion. That's trillion with a T. So, I mean, everything that's that's happening, I'm pretty happy. And then uh, we're using Trade the Chain as usual. And uh, just to look at sentiment analysis. This is the first day that I can remember in quite some time that uh, uh, Dogecoin isn't trending. So, like the hottest on Twitter is RLC, DeFi, AST, Ave, Stellar, and so on and so forth. So I think that's amazing because there was nothing but talk about dogecoin and i don't know if you saw uh elon musk on saturday Night live i'm sure everybody's been talking about it i thought it was funny that was hilarious and uh, it was pretty i mean some of the skits were stupid but uh, what are you gonna do and uh i mean it was good for the market i, I don't care if, if you're a dogecoin fan or a crypto fan it doesn't matter it's it's really just encompasses where people just put their attention to. If it's on Dogecoin, it'll eventually lead into something else because I can guarantee you watching this video, you are not just into one coin. Rarely that happens. So let's take a look. Uh, Bitcoin 57.1. Wow, Ethereum's up over 4,000. 4,150. Congratulations. ETH really crushing it today. Binance coin, Doge in number four spot solidly. What are we at? 48 cents. Well, um, you know, hey, it was up to 64, almost 68 cents, I think. So uh, not too bad. Cardano, buck 72, and so on and so forth. Nothing really fantastic. Not really a, a super green day or a super red day, just right in the middle. And these are the, great, the, the best days to dollar cost average because things are just kind of boring. And uh, I like when things are boring because that's when I get to uh, do all my magic with buying things up and all the different uh, uh, assets that have been dipping, well, I get to buy them up at a discount. So I'm pretty happy because I still believe wholeheartedly that this is just a very, we're like either 40 or 60% of this bull run. And uh, what's gonna come up, I think is gonna be massive. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about. So let's just break in the, in the story, shall we? This is interesting. And I think it's funny uh, because it's, it's interesting because you have the banks and they're really trying their best just to kind of get out of this situation because like, shoot, this thing's really taking hold. In 2017, everybody was laughing, laughing at cryptocurrencies, digital assets. I mean, Bitcoin, you were a moron. Uh, all the people that were into it, they were just like, you know, just so dumb. And now uh, here we are. And everybody who was dismissing it is now trying to get on board, as uh, we saw in this article not too long ago, hundreds of US banks to allow holding and trading Bitcoin. Interesting stuff. Well, here's the Bank of England going, no, 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 uh, just hold your horses. So the governor of the Bank of England, Andrew Bailey, boo, they ha states this, they have no intrinsic value. That doesn't mean to say people don't put value on them because they can have extrinsic value, but they have no intrinsic value. And this is the same types of things that Goldbug will talk about. Like, you know what? Bitcoin's not gold because we can melt gold down and we can make cufflinks and we can use it for transistors and all this stuff. Sure. I don't know a lot of people who are doing that right now uh, for that specific thing. In the investment world, it's all just holding gold bars. Or I don't even know a lot of people that actually hold those tokens. Some do. I, I don't. It's just paper. Uh, but uh, it is a hedge, and that is exactly what it's good for. And some people say, well, you got to hold it. Sure. Uh, I guess so. Uh, goes on to say, I'm going to say this very bluntly again, but uh, them only if you're prepared to lose all your money. Basically, he's saying... If you want to get into crypto, you're going to lose everything, which is the same thing I've been hearing since I've been getting into it. And I'm up, I don't know, like 50X or something like that. So, uh, sure. And then uh, it goes on to state that it's kind of, and the rest of it's a pretty great article. I'm just going to skip over it for time. But this is the crux of it. And it says, on April 19th, the organization, Bank of England, issued a statement that read, the Bank of England and HM Treasury have today announced the joint creation of a 
Central Bank Digital Currency Task Force to coordinate the exploration of a potential UK CBDC. A CBDC would be a new form of digital money issued by the Bank of England and for use by households and businesses. It would exist alongside cash and bank deposits rather than replacing them. So it is a it is a cryptocurrency, but it is their cryptocurrency and a digital asset. And uh, I don't really care what they do. I, I think you can have a CBDC and a crypto and a digital asset and a Cardano and an Ethereum and a blah, 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 uh, all functioning alongside each other. It's like saying we should only have one website for everything because that's all it's going to be. That's what they thought uh, back in the day when the internet came about. They thought it was going to be one, swear to God, they thought it would be one website for everything. And it would just, you you could you could buy, you know, tires and you can get your medicine and you could read the news all in one place. And uh, a couple tried it, but it didn't really work out too well. So again, I don't really see the big issue here, uh, but I do believe that the banks are like, what do we do? They're trying to find their foothold you know, uh, Blockbuster did the same exact thing. The, you know, hopefully they, they catch up. But uh, that is interesting considering the fact that, uh, and I'm always down on America uh, because they're not innovating. But I will say this, Bank of England has taken a step back and uh, America just came out, this was, uh, gosh, only five days ago, where they said hundreds of US banks are allowed holding and trading Bitcoin. We already talked about this. I'm not going to go over it. So, hey, great job, America. You're uh, stepping into... Uh, where you should have been a long time ago. So let me just think in the comment section, that's what's going on. Let's take a look at our next piece because this is the, the telling part about crypto and digital assets. It's always great to find some interesting pieces that show us where we're at and kind of where we're going. This is uh, from uh, CJ Reichel. He's um, a man over there at uh, uh, Market Rebellion. And I totally stole this from him and I told him I would. And this is what's going on. So basically, let me blow this up so you can see them. that's what I'm saying. Basically, this is what we have. So we've got, this is the supply for OTC, over the counter, all these different institutions that are buying up Bitcoin. This is all Bitcoin, not, not anything else, just Bitcoin. And you can see in 2019, uh, January, the very beginning, and there was, you know, a little bit, a little bit around that they, they, they were, they were holding on to so people could buy it. And they said, you know what, um, we're going to, you know, increase our stock because, and this is what's so slick about these guys is that, you know, uh, every, every place that, that like, ah, oh, it's not, not a big deal. Bitcoin's not going to do too much. And all of a sudden in behind the scenes, they're like accumulating like crazy. So they buy all this stuff up and then these institutions come in like, we want to buy, we want to buy. And then of course, you know, you have this this increase in 2019, and what happened in 2020? Well, you know, there was some peaks and valleys here, but people were buying up like crazy OTC, which doesn't really affect the market, and it's pretty much just like a, you know, like hey, just give me this, and and uh, we'll do it in in these small amounts, and then people buy up like crazy, and then all of a sudden, as they buy, then you see like a dip in the amount uh, that is available, and they buy up some more, and now in 2021, as we're going past April because they really loaded up in April and now we see a massive amount and here we are. So in reality, I think this is this is just one of those graphics that just shows up exactly where we are at and where we're going. If we have a ton of demand and we have the same, uh, or in this case, uh, diminishing supply, what usually happens with the price? Well, it goes up. And as everybody has, has, has been talking about lately, and I kind of see this, how this would happen, is that you will see a big influx into Bitcoin. People will start to uh, put a bunch of money into it. And they say, you know what, what's the next thing? Where can I really go? Because Bitcoin's at like $60,000. Can I really go uh, that much farther than, than what that is? What about these altcoins? What about these top 50s? Okay, I'll get into that. And then before you know it, what about these top 500s? Maybe I can go from like, a, you know, a 10X to a 100 or a 1,000X. And that's just kind of how money just flows through crypto and digital assets. So this is just a good sign. So again, I think it's going to be Bitcoin first, altcoins in the top 50, then the top 500, and then back into the back into the the, uh, the top 10. And uh, we'll see what all goes out. But again, I think we're in the right place at the right time. I mean, imagine this. It's just the beginning of May. Just the beginning of May. Look how far we've come as far as market cap. So again, I think this is going to be a great year. And a, <laughs> And just around the corner, not only do we have these types of things where people are buying up, but we've also got 
what I consider the marketing arm of crypto and digital assets, which are personalities and sports figures. So this is the whole story. This I can sum up this whole story in this picture. That's the whole story. The whole story is Tom Brady. If you're not familiar with uh, American football, this is uh, the great, probably the great. He is probably the greatest uh, quarterback uh, of all time. He just won the Super Bowl uh, not too long ago, and Tom Brady's a, a pretty, um, pretty well-known figure. And of course, with laser eyes, that just signifies that he's into cryptocurrency and digital assets. And uh, not a dumb guy, pretty smart guy. So I think he's going to get into this, this investment part. So what I like about this is that this just breeds mass adoption. Because if he's going to get into it, guess what else he's going to do? He's going to talk about it in his social media. And he's going to talk about some investments. And he's going to get into different things, which is going to spread throughout the millions and millions of people that he talks to. On top of that, uh, you've got something like Brady here. And then this gentleman, tennis star Benoit Paré, considering, I'm pretty sure I nailed that, considering pivot to crypto. He is like the uh, a tennis star, top 33 in the world. And he's talking about getting into cryptocurrency. He's a really controversial guy. I've seen him play. Weird. But uh, I mean, again, we've got somebody like this. And then on top of that, da, 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 where was the other piece that I had seen? Oh, yeah. Uh, that's just one part. Uh, Serena Williams, just uh, back in March, made an investment in Bitcoin reward startup Lolly. So, you know, she's talking about these things. She will probably get into it. And then moving back into just uh, the, the, the NFL per se, you know, you've got not only did, you know, Tom get into it, but you got uh, Okung. I forgot. Uh, I think he's a linebacker for the NFL. Correct me in the comments section. I'm sure you'll tell me. And uh, he took half of his uh, his salary and Bitcoin was like 9,000 bucks. So, I mean, why wouldn't you do it? On top of that, you've got uh, some pretty smart people, Grayscale, and they inked a sponsorship deal to be uh, the educators as new NFL prospects come in. So you'll see more growth and more growth. And then of course, on top of that, you had the number one NFL draft pick, uh, took half or no, his, his complete signing bonus in cryptocurrencies, which was uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum and Dogecoin. Well, we'll see how that works out. So again, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, if, if you're new to this space, congratulations. Like you showed up at the right time because uh, you could blindfold yourself and throw some money at something and uh, it would make money. And that's just how it is. The big thing is which one are you going to maximize out with? And uh, that's a story for another time. Anyhow, that's what's going on in the crypto world. Congratulations, right place, right time. And I will finish up with this. Uh, in America, May 17th is coming up, tax time. So if you haven't done your taxes, probably a good idea. Remember, Biden just uh, spent $80 billion to catch people who aren't <laughs> paying their taxes. So uh, if you're scared about it, don't worry, you don't need to be because um, it's just the it's just the, the IRS. Don't No big deal, don't worry. Uh, if you'd like to, there is a program I use called CryptoTrader.Tax. And I actually did a video about it. And in the link in the description, uh, Dan viewers get 20% off. And from the time that I signed up, the time that I sent it to my CPA, this is the second year I've done it, it took me 30 minutes. And it has a direct uh, uh, IP integration. Yeah, I think that's how you say it. And uh, it, it works out pretty darn good, except for Voyager. Voyager, you got to get a CSV file. So you got to do that like ASAP today if you want to, because it's, it's not going to be a, a direct input, which is weird because I introduced the CEO of Crypto Trader to Steve. And well, I'm sure he's got a lot of other things going on. So that's what's going on in the world today. If you, first of all, thanks for sticking around. I appreciate it. If you like today's video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, a like, subscribe. That helps tremendously. I really appreciate it. And that's it. So uh, I will, uh, that is it for today. Thanks for sticking around. See you on the next one.